Hello, boys and girls. It's the best soccer show. Jason Davis and Jerry Dubois. Before we get started with live coverage uh, ahead of USA Jamaica uh, at Columbus Crew Stadium, we just want to acknowledge uh, the 11th anniversary of September 11th. It's one of those days that you kind of have to stop and pause and, and think back and take stock and all of those important things. And Jared and I just want to acknowledge um, uh, remembrance for all of the people that, that passed away on September 11th and uh, our heartfelt thanks to all of the uh, first responders that day and, and all of the remem- remembers for those who lost their lives um, responding to the tragedy as well. All right, guys, now we can get going. When the right people come together at the right moment, when they care almost as much about winning as they do about each other, they can become the best of the best. Welcome to the best soccer show, the best soccer show in the whole world. Here we go, boys and girls. We are live. It's the best soccer show, North American Soccer Network, NESN.TV, NESN.Radio.com. Jason Davis and Jared Dubois, we are taking you up to kickoff USA Jamaica uh, Part 2, the comeback, the return. What's the what's a good sequel name, Jared? Uh, uh, the Reckoning. The Reckoning. I like that one. It is. It might be a reckoning. It might be a reckoning for certain players. It might be a reckoning for Jurgen Klinsmann. Right off the top here, we always like to bring in an expert, talk about the game that's coming up. Today we brought in John Godfrey from the New York Times Goal Blog. How are you, John? Good. How are you guys doing? We are doing fine. We'll be doing better in two and a half hours if the United States takes care of business tonight. And they have to. They have to take care of business. After that loss on Friday night, everybody's down, uh, down on the program, down on the players, down on Jurgen Klinsmann. We expected changes, John. We expected some some shakeup. We didn't think we'd see that midfield trio again. And sure enough, not only do we see not see the midfield trio of Adu, uh, Beckerman, and Jones, we only see Jones. We've got Graham Zussi in this lineup. We've got uh, Jose Francisco Torres in this lineup. No Josie Altador. What are you making of this? You know, I think it's better. I think it's a response, but it's not the response that the so-called experts, uh, present company included, I think we're looking for. I think everyone expected there to be a couple of wingers. I think everyone expected Breck Shea to be in there because he's big and fast and he's looked dangerous when he's been in the in the recent games to go down that left flank and, and send in dangerous crosses and you know, run past his defender, and, 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 and he's not there. So we've got a 4 one 3 2. We've got Torres, Jones, and Zizzi in the middle, and we'll just have to see what happens. It's, it's, it is a big day of reckoning. I, I called it a rematch. I think I should call it a rematch. You know, the, in the first, first bout, the uh, Jamaicans just punched Jurgen and team right in the face, knocked him yeah. down, and, and they've got to come back and win this one. It's, it's like a Rocky movie. It's going to be a, it's going to be very dramatic and very big deal tonight. You know, John, uh, who, who's the pressure more on in this lineup right now? Who's got more on them? Jose Francisco Torres or Graham Zuzzi? Cause this is Zuzzi's real first big chance to shine. Torres has had a few, right? Yeah, Torres has to deliver. I mean, they're, they're neither, neither guy is 30 years old. It's not, you know, they can have a bad game and come back in a couple of years. Um, but, I think there's higher expectations for Torres. I think the guy plays at a high level in Mexico. He's he's had some good games for the U.S. He's had some stinkers. He's the wild card in this one. Well, he's standing right next to Jermaine Jones, who's who, who's the definition of wild card uh, or yellow cards. Uh, but Torres, he 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 could be great. He could be the best player in the pitch. And he could be the worst, and I have no idea. I think Zuzi's going to be sort of what we expect him to be. He's not going to. He's not going to throw a clunker out there, but Torres could, and that's frightening. As um, as you mentioned, there's no out and out wingers. The Jared was uh, we were talking about this. There doesn't seem to be any width to this formation. Who's providing it? Can the United States keep going up the middle of the park, uh, uh, trying to break down Jamaica and actually find any success? It didn't seem to work, and there wasn't a lot of width on Friday night. Why would you? Th- I mean, I know you're changing some personnel here, but why would you throw out? a team that doesn't look like you can stretch Jamaica at all side to side. The only thing I can think of is that you've got Steve Trundolo and Fabian slash Fabian Johnson on the, you know, at the fullback. And you could push those guys forward and make sure that Danny Williams in the number six spot in this four, one, three, two stays home. So 
So you you could do overlapping runs. You could you could really create some good um, you know communication between the, the the midfield and the fullbacks. And and there you have two dangerous guys. Turner's not the fastest guy in the world, but mm-hmm. he's a proven threat. He's been this is his fourth cycle. He knows what it takes to win in games like this. And Fabian Johnson is fast, dangerous, great left foot. So. That's the only thing I can think of because if you're going to play narrow again, you know, playing not to lose, uh, you, you know what? You might not be coach of the United States men's national team for a hell of a lot longer. You know, I really feel that this is a game where Fabian Johnson just needs to unleash. I get the feeling that over the last couple of games, he's been kind of. I don't know if he's been intentionally held back by Klinsman or been told to take a more reserved role, not to get overexposed on that left wing. But I just, from what I remember of Fabian Johnson going back to the games in Europe back in the the winter, this is a guy that was just free flowing, streaking up the left side. And I haven't seen that player in a while now. Do you think that the difference between the Jamaica game and this game is that these guys are going to be freed up and allowed to go forward a lot more? It's got to be. What else are they doing? What, you know, it, it, Klinsman has talked repeatedly about a proactive style and going for it. And if not now, then when? I mean, the the, the best I've seen Johnson do is that that little seven second GIF file that we've all watched a thousand times on YouTube of him deking. Uh, I think it was Brazil, right? Yeah, it was a, that, mm-hmm. that great moment that somehow didn't lead to a goal. But he's got so much to offer. And if and if the reins have to come off, he he is. He's a thoroughbred. He needs, he needs to go out there and run. He's not thoroughbred. He's a stallion, and he needs to run free. And, and if we don't see that tonight, I, you know, I think the U.S. is in a difficult situation. Well, let's come back to the to the middle of the field. Uh, based on this lineup, based on, on the formation we're getting, it looks to me like Jermaine Jones is supposed to be initiating the offense. He's, your, he's the guy who the, the attack has to go through. He's the guy with the keys to the car. I'm not sure I want Jermaine Jones driving my car. I don't know if it's going to crash. I don't know what direction it's going to go in. I don't know. <laughs> why are we doing why, why is what on, what on earth could compel Jurgen Klinsmann to give Jermaine Jones this responsibility? The only thing I can think of is Chalka, he, he's done that a lot. You know, he, he's played that role. Even, even a Blackburn, he played that role. He was a box-to-box guy. I mean, no one's going to confuse him for Michael Essien or Steven Gerrard, but he often plays a role like that. And he's got to have, there's like four guys in this pitch who need to have the games of their lives. That's the way I feel about it. I think Jose Torres and, and Jermaine Jones are at top of that list. Uh, Finn and Johnson is another. Uh, they, they really need to step up. And yes, it's, it's frightening when you think that you're putting so much pressure, so much responsibility on the shoulders of a guy who, you know, is, is a, it's sort of a punchline when it comes to drawing yellow cards. And then you have Torres who is, who disappears and he can, he can, he can be, a, I've seen him be a defensive beast and I've seen him just be the most timid player in the world. So those two guys, you know, it, it's going to come down to them. And I think that, I think it's going to be fascinating to watch. You know, the arguably the hottest striker that the U S national team has right now, Josie Altador with his club not on the field tonight. Now, Jason and I talked a lot at last game about the fact that the, the fact that Josie probably looked so bad was the lack of service being given to him. Now, is this more a move just to say, let's get Clint Dempsey, maybe our, our best player closer to goal, or is this fundamentally Altidore just isn't getting it done, and maybe we're a bit wrong in that there's things that inherently Altidore is not bringing to the game outside of the fact that the midfield is just not getting him the ball? I think... I think Dempsey needs to be close to goal. I think he is head and shoulders better than every other outfield player in the squad right now with Bradley and Donovan going. So get him, get him near the goal. And I do think that Josie is, you know, he's killing it in the Netherlands and he was invisible on Friday, but I truly don't blame him other than, you know, could he have run back and, Got some more balls on the other side of the, the halfway line. Yeah, sure, but to what point? I saw him doing it a couple I, I, times, John. It didn't seem to work out too well. He came back and picked the ball up and, and maybe even initiated a few things, and by the time he got back to where he needed to be, it had already broken down. Yeah, I, I think we'll see Josie in the, in the 60th minute, maybe, if, if the U.S. is still struggling to the tie or close game. You know, you can put Josie on that wing. He plays that way. He plays, he plays wide for, you know, AZ. So I, I, I think that... that that that's really what what's going to happen. I don't think it's just punishment. I think that you got to put the ball in the back of the net. And I think Gomez 
and Dempsey are the two best strikers. We're doing a 4 one 3 2 Stick them in there. you got two great subs in Altidore and Terrence Boyd ready to hop in if, if uh, we get to 80 minutes and it's, and it's still tense. Is is it me or does this scream high pressure? There's a lot of guys on this field that are going to be pushed up high, pushed higher up the park than you would than you saw on Friday night, for example. And we know Clint, one of Klinsman's tenants is high pressure, get the ball back, get the ball back. It looks like they're going to be coming after Jamaica here. Is there too much risk there? Are we okay with that? How do you feel about that, John? Uh, you know what? A tie doesn't cut it here. I think that Jermaine Jones, if he's playing that, that, that you know central attacking midfielder role, whatever you want to call it, he definitely doesn't seem to be in a defensive spot. No. He can break up a play, tap the ball to Torres, Torres sends it down a wing or, or, or hands it into to Dempsey in a dangerous spot. That, that's got to be what they're hoping for. It's got to be a high-pressure game. And it, it, it's Torres and Jones, Torres and Jones, Jones and Torres, who need to have, you know, the, the games of their international lives. You know, we had a conversation a lot over the last couple of days or last week or so about Bradley, Donovan, both out. Who does this team miss more, you think, uh, coming out of that Jamaica game? Is it the the uh, possession that Bradley brings to the game or the more uh, the or the ball movement and intelligence that uh, Donovan kind of brings to the field? Which one do you think this team is missing more right now? Well, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but I'm on Twitter. I mean, guys, I don't know if you're aware of that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, I, I tweeted last night, I, I think I had a, might have had a beverage or two of me, that... Um, <laughs> Clint Dempsey is the best American player, but Michael Bradley is the most important. And I, I believe that. I believe that Michael Bradley can be, you know, an influential player in like three different positions. Mm -hmm. He can make up for other players' mistakes. He can be a game changer in a lot of levels. It's not, you know, it's not flashy. It's not, you know, Clint with the, the Cristiano Ronaldo moves and the, and the, and the cool strikes. And, and, and you know, Clint Dempsey is special, no question about it. But, but Michael Bradley can slot into so many roles. He's so intelligent, and he's got a great engine. He never stops running. Uh, I just feel like he's the guy the U.S. misses the most. Landon, you know, would have been great. He would have given them a counterattacking option that would have forced Jamaica, or would, would have, w wouldn't have allowed Jamaica to push forward so far on Friday night. But, but Bradley's the thing, the guy who's clearly hard to replace because he is desperately missed. So at this point, with the changes you've seen with this lineup, with this formation, uh, how, confi how confident are you, John, that they're going to get this done? I just can't imagine they don't. I mean, it, 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 this would be like the U23s losing in the semifinal round of Olympic qualifying. That would never happen. Oh, wait, that did happen. Um, <laughs> don't do that to us. Uh, I know. It, it, I just can't imagine. It, 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 it's certainly possible. And, and while it doesn't end tonight with a with a U.S. loss, it becomes a, yeah. a lot more difficult. So I, I really do think they will get a result. I, I think it will be tight. Um, I, I, you know what? Anything's possible. I, I certainly wouldn't you know throw a hundred dollars down in a bet. I just I just have very limited confidence after that Friday night showing. That's tough. All right, so give us give us a prediction. I'm going to have to ask you. I know this is what we do, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I think two one US wins. All right. they, if they can't and if they can't hold serve at home, then you know what? We should start uh working on twenty eighteen because you have to be able to beat Jamaica at home. Uh it doesn't matter if, if Bradley and Stuart Holden and Landon Donovan are out. You have to be able to beat Jamaica at home in World Cup qualification. Tend to agree. John Godfrey, New York Times, Gold Blog. Thanks very much for your time. Guys, go check him out. I don't think he's doing are you doing uh ratings for this game? I don't think so. No, okay. I'm going to enjoy it. All right, so enjoy the game. I'm hoping your 2-1 holds up, and we'll talk to you soon, John. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, at J.H. Godfrey on Twitter. Follow him. Excellent conversation about soccer and wine. It's like Jay Rodius without the, well, I don't know, without the bad jokes, probably. Wow. Right? <laughs> Sorry, I did that to you. I didn't mean to. No, you have great jokes. Amazing jokes out of it, Jay it Intermingled with tons of bad ones. Yes, and, and actually... <laughs> Jay Your wine stuff. No, you do. Like like on a weekend night, you do get a little wine stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, I get right. a little whiny. Let's, let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll open the phone lines. Ahead of USA Jamaica from Columbus, Ohio, Jason Davis, Jerry Dewa, Best Soccer Show, North American Soccer Network, NASN.TV.
I'm Garrett Cleverly, co-host of MLS in 30 with John Arnold. Check us out every Tuesday and Friday as we break down the latest in MLS. We bring in the best beat writers throughout the nation, the guys that know the teams better than the teams know themselves. We also go over the best blank of the week and best blank of the weekends, and we break down the latest hot gossip, which is usually just typical MLS news. Check us out every Tuesday and Friday, only on NASN Radio. Now back to more NASN programming. Soccer Made in Portland airs Tuesdays and Fridays on the North American Soccer Network. Get your weekly Portland Timbers fix with interviews, analysis, and the latest team news with Kelly McLean and Michael Orr. Every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, we'll break down the previous weekend's game. And then again on Friday afternoons, join us at 3.30 p.m. Pacific for the last word before the game as we preview the Timbers' upcoming opponent, including interviews with some of the best soccer journalists from around the country. That's Soccer Made in Portland, live twice a week at NASN.TV. All right, everybody, we are here, ready to take your phone calls. Jason and Jared, best soccer show ahead of a crucial, 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 a thousand times crucial game for the U.S. men's national team against Jamaica in Columbus. Jared, before I open yes, the sir. phone, actually, let me get this out there. 201-430-2378 is the phone number. If you want to get in, get on the line now. Let us know what you think, how you're feeling, how confident you are. And here's the question I have to pose to you, Jared. Um, yes. You know, all of that stuff is, is standard fan stuff. Is this, I don't know, since, you know, forget forget World Cups, forget actual tournaments. Is this the biggest qualifier the United States has played in 20 years? Oh, I mean, man. Is it, is it, is, is it, how big is this? I mean, they didn't have to qualify for 94, so maybe it's, maybe it's all the way back to 89. And, and I mean, I, yeah, I'm the shot heard around the world kind of still, thing. Still uh, hyperbole. I realize that, but I can't think of another qualifier. I mean, okay, there was a couple in the hex. I guess I don't know. Find me a hex game that matters. I, I, I don't know that I remember one. I remember, the, uh, dang it, the, when that point that the the point that the U.S. got in Jamaica to secure, I think 2006 was pretty big. But I, well, off the, the top but, of my head, I'm not thinking of one bigger than this one right now. Okay, well, this is obviously not you know win or you're out situation that's not no what no no but but it's a, it, it's a scarily close it's it's scarily close to that at a way too early stage in the qualifying that's I, I, why i think there's just so much on it and i think that's why we're all feeling the pressure and why people are just breaking down all over the place sobbing in corners across the american soccer landscape we just don't know what to make of this um, you know, there's an alternate. There's some alternating on my timeline, my Twitter timeline between people who say, you know what, if you think the United States is not going to make the hex, you're crazy. You should have your head examined. And then there's people on the other side who say, you know what, this is a lot tougher than people think. Uh, it's not going to be easy. You're gonna it, this. The United States might not qualify for this World Cup. You, you don't think Jamaica is up for this game? Jamaica has a chance to be the team that puts the big one of the two big giants of Concacaf on their heels and almost knock them out for the count. I mean, this is a big thing for Jamaica. You want that notch on your belt after just getting your first win ever against the U.S. at home. Uh, to to be able to be, to be put in a position, I mean, every Jamaican is going to be up for this game. And uh, I, I got to say, there's so many good storylines around this. The 9-11 stuff also going around. There's a lot of emotion for the U.S. as well. But uh, given all that, there's no place I want to be more than Columbus right now. Right. Area code 484, who's been patiently waiting while Jared jabbers on. Who's this? Yo, guys, it's Mike. Hey, Mike, what's up? Uh, I got to be honest. I'm, I'm nervous, but... That being said, I'm really hoping last week lights a fire under these guys and maybe wakes them up a little bit. And I, I can't help but feel the U.S. is always maybe playing down the competition, like the countries we should be in CONCACAF, and then plays up and gets up for the big games against Italy's, against Mexico's. Uh, I'm hoping maybe finally we can get some sort of motivation and step on these teams throats when we should be you know there are there have been some games in the past where yeah and that, that criticism is certainly uh, uh warranted the united states tends to play down to their competition every now and then they'll go out and they'll they'll throw one together and they will do what you think they should do and then we just get to that point where we go oh, well they should be doing that every time they shouldn't go to jamaica and struggle and lose uh two one 
they they should be going and getting that win. And and I think that's you know we're riding that fine line between expectations, Jared, of where this program should be twenty five years later, and where we actually are, and how much expectations we're allowed to have. Are we allowed to take Jamaica in Jamaica as a as a as a given? Are we allowed to take that game as a given? I mean, obviously no. not. Lost it. No. Should we be at that point now? Uh, I don't necessarily know. I think Jamaica's one of those teams that's still that kind of borderline. I don't think that's a given when it's Jamaica. Jamaica's got a better quality than that. I think we're at the point where there's certain teams like maybe, uh, I, I don't know, like when we go to Guatemala, I think we should definitely be st- threatening yeah. to to win yeah. that game. And I think the, the U.S. did threaten to win that game. I don't know that there's many pushover Listen, there's plenty of teams and countries whose programs we should be better than in CONCACAF, but when you throw the environment we have to play these games in on the road, I think that's the great equalizer. You can say your team is better this many times of the year, this many mm-hmm. times out of 10 over a lot of these countries because the talent's there, but the environment has played such a big role as well as, I mean, I hate to say it, but CONCACAF refereeing plays a big, pretty big role in this stuff as well. Area code 248, who's this? Hi, this is Ishwar. Um... I just want to say I'm really excited about the lineup that uh, Clinton put out today. I think unlike uh, last week, we're finally getting to see players in their positions. You know, Jones doesn't start for a Champions League club week in, week out, unless he's a good player. Well, true. That means he's got to be playing in his position. Williams is a classic defensive midfielder. We're finally getting to see him in that position. Yuzi and Torres, they could be great because they can actually move the ball. You know what I mean? And I really hope Fabian Johnson plays to his midfield strength and freaking up and down that left flank because you know what he can do with his- no, it's, it's an excellent point about, especially about Danny Williams. We're we're going to see Danny Williams doing what what Danny Williams does best, Jared. This is if you're going to give him a job, and you're going to have as much confidence as you want to have as much confidence as possible of in as much confidence as possible in the job he's going to go out there. This is the place. This is where you want to put him. Now, when it comes to Torres and Zusi and Jones, I expect those things to be moving around. Those are going to be moving pieces. They're not going to be stuck in in sec- in parts of the field very much. So. It, it's almost kind of a, uh, you know, that midfield trio is going to be interchanging a lot. Area code 706, who's this? It's Pedro, guys. What's up, Pedro? Reunited and it feels <laughs> so good. <laughs> uh, I just want to let you guys know I just finished prepping for this game by bending some saute pans and ripping up some phone books. Oh, I'm no. ready to go. <laughs> Very good. Donnie Moore over there. Regular Donnie Moore over your, there. What? Your forearms must be immense. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, uh, Derek, did you see the, the motivational yeah, speak? Yeah, I heard about it. Here's the thing. I kind of dig that Klinsman kind of does these kind of things. It's different, and I dig I that. Saw some people, I saw some people coming down pretty hard on Klinsman and U.S. Soccer. U.S. Soccer for le- releasing the video. Klinsman for having the guy come in. I don't care. It's, this, teams do this kind of stuff all the time. It's not a big deal. Had nothing to do with the game. It doesn't make them look any lower rent than the Yankees who did the same thing and all these other teams. The guy is the... A team chaplain for the Oakland A's, I found out. So it's not the guy is like this is his gig. He does, you know, he goes and talks to sports teams. It's no big deal. All right. So are you? I have an actual question for you guys. Uh oh. Go ahead. So, first question and the only question I really want to know is who scores first, and if we score first, what do we do? And if they score first, what do we do? Do you want me what I hope we do or what I think we'll actually do? <laughs> well, what should we do? Let's right. just say I do we think, start off and we're down. I do. Th- I, I okay. If, if we're down, then you know you got to. You, you're. I think no matter what this the the situation in terms of the scoreline, you've got to go for goal. You you got to keep pushing. You got to stay high pressure. You got to keep trying to attack. You cannot sit back. This de- this lineup is not is not built to sit back like the one we saw on Friday night. They, this this lineup is meant to go forward, and they're going to be less effective, especially because when they're going forward, they're going to have the ball. That's when they're going to be most effective. They've got to get the ball. They've got to keep the ball. I don't need 25 pass sequences necessarily, but I need them to con- continue to attack. So that's what I'm hoping for, no matter whether, whether they go down a goal earlier or, or go up a goal early, Jared. Yeah, I think I think the U.S. goes up early on this, and I think that I don't think they go into a shell. I think they saw the last game that this team, if there's any team that should have been that was that was made to go into a shell and protect a one-zero lead, it was that team that was on the field last week and they couldn't get it done. And I think what they need to do on this in this game is if they go up early, possess the ball, move the ball, don't go defensive. You're at home in front of the Columbus this Columbus crowd, which has been magic for the U.S. Uh, national team over the last ten years. You know, so I think you embrace that. 
you embrace the fact that this is your chance to get the job done playing creatively and playing with possession. Area code 619, who's this? Hi, Enrique, how you guys doing? Hey, Enrique, what's up? Uh, of course, for you guys, uh, once again, we see a uh, starting lineup, midfield that isn't the same. When will we, when will we see <laughs> one? A steady one. You want a consistent midfield lineup? Wait until Michael Bradley's healthy first. Yeah, and then we'll, injuries not to not to be a factor. Uh, you know, I, I landed Donovan, Michael Bradley. I mean, if 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 Jurgen Klinsmann had to go win a game, those guys are both starting. So that's that's part of your midfield right there. Um, De, you know, Dempsey, whether or not he's a forward or not, or um, I, I I don't I don't I don't know that we're going to see a consistent one. I mean, well, now you have the Danny Williams kind of thing in there too. Is if Danny Williams can obviously, if in a very important game, Danny Williams is identified as the guy that's going to be the defensive role in the center of midfield. I mean, does that mean that you're not going to see Adu anymore? You're not going to see Jones if he features well today. I mean, it could all change all over again because when Bradley gets back, and if Danny Williams has success tonight, that completely changes the 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 role that Jermaine Jones and Marisa do play in this team. All yeah. of a sudden, these guys that who are stalwarts in those positions for the last couple of years maybe are on aren't as so necessary. Feeling confident, Enrique? Uh, a little bit based based, based upon that. Uh, Jamaica's going to be very um, psyched up. The last meeting was one one, and that's pretty much a win for them. A win at home and a tie. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the phone call, Enrique. I I I don't know. I, I was thinking about this, Jared, before we came on the air. I got home. I'm getting ready for the show. I don't know if I'm nervous. I don't know. Maybe it's doing the show, and and that that kind of changes my emotional state a little bit. But I, I, I just I'm not sure I'm I'm nervous and I'm wondering if I should be. And looking at the line, I didn't know the lineup at the time, and now I do, and I'm still not really nervous, and I'm not confident in Zusi or Torres. But I, there's, I'm just I, I think that's something. just I think that's the the maturity hopefully that the the, the U.S. soccer fan is kind of getting is that th- this team is better. You know they're better. It's just the fact that it makes it uneasy. And I think it's, there's that uneasiness that people are re- misp- mistaking for dread. You know, I don't think mis- uh, being mis... Uh, I-, I just don't think they're the same thing. I think overall people know the quality and the depth that this team has. It's just a matter of getting all the, everyone on the same page. This lineup doesn't enthuse me with... like It just fills me with confidence. The fact that Chirundolo and Bocanegra are back there, that helps me a lot. I think that it's leadership okay. from the back is going to be huge. The organization that that provides. Having a person that, like Danny Williams in front of them that hasn't always been there, that makes me a little bit more uneasy. But with Bocanegra and Chirundolo there, I think that's going to be a huge factor today. I th- I do think that the leadership factor is something we could easily overlook. And and having both Chirundolo and Bocanegra back in the lineup. And, and who knows if Bocanegra would have started if Goodson wasn't suspended for yellow card accumulation. I, I don't know. Maybe he would have stuck Either with way, him. I like the move. I like the move even if Goodson was in shape. It was, I'm sorry, was didn't have the, the card situation because I think this team needed leadership and it needed something strong and galvanizing coming out of that Jamaica game. Not that he's going to bring anything really tangible on the field in that quantity, but I just know that it's like a, a nice little blanket back there. Having Trundolo, having uh, Bocanegra back there, that it's just it's you feel safe. You would feel inherently safe having those guys there. You know, as um, something a small thing that that could become a good uh, big thing. This is the United States. They, they tend to to get set pieces and and they often take advantage of them. We had a couple in Jamaica. Who took those? Uh, was it uh, if it's taking those? You know, I believe Parkers took uh, at least one or two of them. I, I think if I remember correctly, I think Parkers took at least one of them. Okay, but I think I think Herc took a couple, maybe one or two. Uh, t- having somebody in this game who can take a set piece makes them a, b- a more dangerous team as well. I mean, you still got Bocanegra who knows how to score goals. Jeff Cameron certainly knows how to head in a goal. Graham Zussi's better with a free kick than, than both of those. Yeah, guys. without a doubt. You have, for the first time, and I can't remember how long, you have a legit free kick a factor, like a, a threat on this U.S. national team. Who's the last person you remember being a, a legit free kick threat? I don't remember one. <laughs> To well, be honest, honest with you. Donovan's gone through spurts where he's been dangerous with them. I, I don't think he not like not like Graham Zuzi can. I mean, the Zuzi Uzi could come out tonight in, in Columbus. Okay. Oh, oh, we don't like we know Dempsey likes to hit him, and he has scored a, a couple of free kicks this year. In the, that, last, that free kick goal against if it, for Fulham last season was his first free kick goal of his entire yes, career. No, you know that, right? I okay. know, I know it was, but he's it saying guys can improve. Can improve. I'm just saying from a from a from a and Torres can take it. Actually, Torres is going to take all the set pieces. Now that I think about it, 
Especially from I, the win- I, I believe that's correct. I, normally, uh, Bradley would take him. Donovan would take him. I think in their absence, I, uh, Torres is a definite person that, that should be serving a ball into the box. If I you're going to go for a strike, though, I want it to be Zuzi. Yeah. No, no, I, I agree. If you're taking a shot, it might be Zuzi. But it, but um, I, if we're trying to trying to get the ball in somebody's head, I, I just want those to be effective, and they need to be dangerous. I need because that that will. That will help dampen Jamaica's spirits as well if they have to defend set pieces. So uh, we're not going to get the the classic width, and we're not going to have guys taking the ball to the end line. But they've got to find a way to get some set pieces, whether it's fouls or or what. So uh, that's that's just a small aspect that could rear its head tonight. I think it's something worth watching. Obviously, set piece defense is an issue. Hopefully, that's something Jurgen Klinsmann has tackled over the last couple of days, Jared. They they did they did the disastrous results in Jamaica giving up two free kick goals. Don't want to do that again. Don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're down a goal or you lose a lead because you can't form a proper wall because you give up a, a foul 25 yards from goal. Don't do it. Our producer Trevor just let us know something that Frankie Hayduck, according to Steve Goff, is on the signboards rallying the Columbus crowd to uh, to, to uh, uh, get them enthused. Here's my thing: shouldn't U.S. Soccer put Frankie Hayduck on retainer to go to every game oh, and be the hype man of U.S. I, soccer? I agree. He's a Columbus Crew employee at the moment. They should borrow him whenever the occasion occasion arises. They need. I mean, it happens to be it's in Columbus. It's easy for Frankie to to be the guy there, but. He, yeah, he needs to travel. We need Frankie everywhere, and not like I, I can't think of another another guy, a, a, a guy better guy, a guy better suited for that job. Than I Frank. feel bad to make Frankie hate like a mascot, but the guy is. He just is. He's everything that makes you feel good. <laughs> you know, he really is. It's just so, so all fun. Those, all those nervous feelings we've been having, and all that dread you were talking about. You see Frankie Hayduk pumping up the crowd. Man, on the washes side. away, dude. Just, shoo, it's gone. Absolutely gone. ESPN is on the air getting ready uh, to move to kickoff. I'm not sure how long we have. Should probably start wrapping this up. Um, We'll be back at halftime and after the game as well. Don't forget, halftime report, quick review of the first half. We'll take a couple calls if you guys want to get in. And then the postgame, obviously, we'll talk about the fallout. Uh, Win, lose, draw, whatever. I'm quick, Jared. Predictions. What you got? Uh, I think it'd be a 2-0 win for the U.S., all right, I, I'm going to go 2-1 for the United States. I, I'm, I think they can keep a clean sheet, but I'm not 100% certain. All right, that's it, guys. Thanks to John Godfrey from the New York Times Gold Blog for joining us in the first segment. Thanks to all the callers for getting in. We will talk to you at halftime. Jason Davis, Jared Duval, Best Soccer Show, NASN.TV, NASNradio.com. Jason Davis, Jared Dubois, best soccer show, halftime report, USA, Jamaica, no score, probably should be a score. The United States absolutely dominated the first half of play in Columbus and have nothing to show for it. Jared, what's going on? Uh, well, first of all, uh, listeners out there, you can, guys can get in on the conversation if you want, 201-430-2378. Uh, uh, more than anything, I think the number one thing for the U.S. going out of the half, going into the second half, is you can choose to do let the first half frustrations do two things. You can either, A, embrace the fact that you are dominating this game and show the patience that not to waver with the, with, just because the things haven't gone your way, or you can allow it to frustrate you. You can allow it to, to, to wallow in the fact that things aren't going your way. I hope that Jurgen Klinsmann, and given the positivity that he usually shows, I gotta think he's gonna push the guys in a good direction here. The only, my only fear is, and we saw it creeping in at the tail end of the first half. Is my only fear is that impatience starts to kick in, not frustration necessarily, because they were still going out to make it, and they were still um, creating space and finding guys in good positions. My only fear is that they start taking uh, easy passes or the wrong pass, or they they push for. A magical pass when there's like we a couple times we saw Trundle going up the wing wide open in plenty of space on the right side and somebody tries to make an entry pass through the middle and it just doesn't work out and the ball's 
going back over to Jamaica. And the United States is doing a great job of getting the ball back, and that's something we say. The energy is off the charts. So yeah. you have to give Jurgen Klinsmann credit for how they've played because he set them out and he put the personnel in that have made a gigantic difference. And you're supposed to dominate at home, and they are. But they, can't, they haven't found them back in the net yet, and it's a little troubling that they've hit the woodwork three different times. That Miller is standing See, on. You can call it troubling. I tr- I choose to think of it as encouraging. I choose to think of it that way. It's fine, but the longer you let Jamaica stay in this game, the more likely it is they're going to find something of their own. A mistake gets made in the back. They ki- they hit the Americans on the break, and next thing you know, we're in trouble. Someone's on the line. I'm not sure who this is. What's up? Okay, that's. <laughs> Terrible con- connection. I'm not sure. It's that unknown phone number. Somebody calling that us. May it be a lady? I don't know. <laughs> was it a lady? Well, I don't know. Sure. Uh, First of all, one one quick thing. The flanks for the we asked the question in the pregame. Where's the width going to come from? Where's the width come from? This is what we were waiting for last game with Fabian Johnson, Steve Chirundula, who wasn't in last game, obviously, but freed up to go forward and establish the width where the midfielders aren't, and it is working fantastically so far. Let's look at the guys that he inserted into this lineup that didn't play in Jamaica that we a couple of guys we were a little worried about. Jose Francisco Torres, thumbs up, thumbs down very very quickly. Thumbs up. I think he's doing exactly what he was expected, moving the Graham ball. Zuzzi. Graham Zuzzi, thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up with, without a doubt, bringing a lot of infectious energy into this game right now. Eric Code 562, who's this? Byron. Hey, what's up, Byron? What would you make of the first uh, half? Uh, I like it. I mean, I like the way they're attacking, I like, I like how they're attacking by both sides and even the long range shot. And I actually like uh, Graham Susie, the work that he's doing right now. And I think with a little more patience, the goal will be here. A little bit, a little bit of patience, I think would would serve them well. Um, but th- they've had their opportunities and they're creating chances. And and considering how they played on Friday, just the fact that they're creating chances, getting the ball on on net, making the goalkeeper work is encouraging. They'll find one. I have no doubts they'll find one. My concern is what Jamaica might do if the United States just gets a little too lax defending. Yeah, but Jamaica, I mean, they don't see... Uh, don't seem interested. I, <laughs> I didn't see any attacking intentions by them. No, I, I agree. Uh, thanks for the phone call, Byron. I didn't see Jamaica. They wanted to sit back. They're, they're, they want to try to protect this and get out of here with a point. No goal scored. Area code 410, who's this? Hello? Yes, you're on the air. What's up? Hi, this is Julio. Hey, Julio. Uh, what do you guys think of Danny Williams? I think Danny Williams has been fine. He's a, he's a little higher up the pitch than I expected him to be, Jared. But uh, you know, obviously, that's I think because of Jamaica. That's more of a product of the style of game Jamaica is playing. It's because true. they're playing so far, it reserved into their own third. Danny Williams is often starting his position way further into the. But I think what he's bringing to the game, I think it, it, he's been so incredibly industrious. One thing that I said to you before we started just now in the halftime show is that every time the U.S. is losing the ball, they are swarming, and Danny Williams is a huge part of that. He's setting yeah. that tone, and that's something Jurgen Klinsmann has talked to from day one when he took over this team is that when you lose the ball you work as a team to get it back and we're seeing it right now definitely no dumb no no exceedingly dumb fouls nothing that's drawn a card in fact Jermaine Jones has has uh gotten Jamaica a card on the other side I think that was Taylor that that took a swipe at him in the yeah, middle he of- almost gets one himself playing a little little pushy game with with one of the guys I mean th- so, Jermaine so Jones just has no sense to him yeah, Eric code 706 who's this Hey guys, I just want to complete the Hispanic name trifecta. Oh. Pedro. <laughs> Pedro, so <laughs> All right. how's it going? So, uh, your thoughts on the first half, Pedro? Oh man, really good play out of some really surprising guys. I mean, Zuzi stepping up. I like Fabian Johnson, I like Danny Williams, but I need an over under. Um, are we going to finish with ten guys or less in this game? And when did Jermaine Jones yeah. promise you two yellows? He, he like like I just said, he's kind of kept it in check. I mean, he's he's always prone to something. And and there's there's it's very little doubt he's going to pick up a yellow at some point, Jared. You just hope that when he does it, it's the right spot. Like, okay, a professional foul, keeping Jamaica off the break, that kind of thing I can handle. Taking a swipe at someone and making the, the referee, this is a Honduran referee, giving him an opportunity to maybe go to the back pocket is where I think we get we 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 get scared. That's what you're talking about, Pedro. We can't go we can't afford to go down to ten men and yeah. win this game. Yeah, I mean He's not providing much offensively today, and I think defensively he's more of a liability right now with his with his anger. And I, my heart, I honestly <laughs> cannot take it. Uh. It's killing me. Can we put somebody else in? I mean, would you rather see Adu in there? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, you know what? I, I do less prone to the dumb foul, Jared, but... I, I would rather see if, if – here's the thing. Jamaica is not pushing the U.S. at all defensively. So Danny Williams is handling that part of the field really well. If you're going to make a move, maybe you bring Jose Francisco Torres into the center. You bring Jones out and you bring Breck Shea in on the left. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad – now, they, they are finding some, some, some opportunities on the wings, which, which is coming through the fullbacks and not through uh, midfield right. players. But if you put Breck Shea up there – you get some overlap play that could that could work fairly well. Torres is drifting out there. Obviously, that's that's kind of where he's positioned on the field. Area code six one nine. Who's this? How you guys doing, Enrique? Hey, what's up, um, Enrique? Do we see Torres coming out anytime soon, or do we keep the same team and just have them pass the ball a little bit moving forward? Because it seems like everything's a square ball. Um, there, 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 there's been a lot of square balls, I, I guess. Jared, do you think they've over, they've that, that's a, that's a product of the way, once again, it's a product of the way Jamaica's playing. You're going to move, you're going to do those square balls to move the point of, of attack and fi- until you find the seam. And they're doing a great job of that. Some of the best opportunities of this entire game have come from 25 pass combinations. And you've got to be willing to have the patience there to let that happen. And square balls are a part of it. And that's Jose Francisco Torres' game. That's a big difference from the first leg. Do you see any reason to bring Torres off, Enrique? Um, no. I, I, the more I see, the, uh, we need a spark. I don't know, and yeah. I don't know who to take out. Who do you guys need? Uh, who do you guys need? I think, Zuzi, I don't know that you need I, – I feel the spark is there. I really feel it. The spark is there in a player named Graham Zuzi. The spark is there in a player named Hercules Gomez, Danny There's, Williams. There are sparks on this field right look, now. Look, here's the thing. How can we? How greedy can we get about sparks when we've had multiple opportunities, when the ball has hit the woodwork several different times through Williams, through Zuzi, uh, Hercules Gomez had a chance there, there and, and Miller is just making great plays. How greedy can we get looking for a change when it's working right now? Now, what's not working is scoring goals, but that's I, that's I would rather if if one team has to count on one thing, I would rather continue to count on the USA's type of possession game right now than Jamaica counting on Miller making that many more great saves. I, it, look, it, that, that it, it can't one of those things can't hold up, and I think the Jamaica side is the one that can't hold up. I think you hold off on making a move until you absolutely need to, until there's a direct reason to make the move. Now, if you go up one nothing, I'd be a little afraid he might go defensive, but. Because and I, I, because I still want to attack. Because you're taking the game to Jamaica. You don't want to give them opportunity to find themselves offensively. Keep them uh, just defending and keep pressing. I, I don't know why there would be a change right now. And again, uh, until you have a reason to, maybe it's a Terrence Boyd for some energy. Um, maybe it's a Breck Shea to give you some width. Uh, he can camp out there on the left side and 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 just rain crosses in. Is that most effective way to try to go after the Jamaica goal? Probably not. But, but no. But what I like about what they're doing is that the point of attack is consistently changing. All right, we just seem to have uh, lost Jared okay. there. Sorry, Enrique. You got any other thoughts? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, uh, going back to uh, I think uh, one of your uh, shows you said about chance, and I hope the chance goes in because if it doesn't. Yeah, I know. The longer it goes on, thanks for the call. The longer it goes on, the more nerves set in, the more the Americans press, the more the Jamaicans have a chance to hit them on the counter. So that's we, we we're just a little worried about letting it go too long. I, I'm I, you know, I'm, I'm encouraged by everything we've seen. This is the best half of, of soccer they've played since when, Jared? Um, um, Scotland. Since Scotland and that, you know, we, we know how that turned out and they're not. They're not just pouring them in like they did against Scotland, but uh, there is there. I, I don't I don't know how else to to say this other than it's just a matter of finding the goal, and then once that happens, things will start clicking. I, I don't have a problem I, I with anything so. they've done. There's more than anything, they can't just they can't dwell on the stuff. The fact stuff's not going the way they can't get that mentality of it's not our day. Everything's against us. Yeah. Play it up as we are dominating this game and don't just get, embrace that. Don't let the frustration set into the point where you're taking stupid shots. I mean, all of the long range efforts at this point, I've been fine with. Even that that last one that, that Williams put way over the bar because, because he earned it. He had, yeah, he had earned it. He had almost uh, almost scored one earlier. Um, they're 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 mixing, like you said, point of attack. They're mixing things up. They're trying they're trying to play through. Then they'll find a shot. I'd like to see Dempsey take one in space. He he seems to be dribbling himself into trouble a lot. Erico nine seven two. Who's this? Hey, what's up, guys? It's Will. Hey, Will. Hey, uh, so so the attack looks good. Uh, I was kind of impressed about the build-up play, but 
I kind of have to put it in perspective that Jamaica is playing back and not even pressuring at all. Like, sure, no, no, sure. Not even you can't hold that against the U.S. Though. They are it's frustrating watching all those shots miss. Okay, they're making it easy for the Americans to pass the ball around, certainly. And we've seen this script before. But you can't fault the Americans for not only taking that opportunity to, to possess the ball and pass it around, but creating chances out of it. The, we're not talking about half chances. We're not talking about, you know, oh, they kind of got close and flubbed it at the end. We're talking about multiple legitimate chances to score and just getting a bit unlucky. That's, that's, that's the biggest it, difference to me. I, that's I the, agree, and I, I'm, I'm very impressed with Zussi. Uh, the way he's running around on that pitch, it's it's pretty impressive, actually. So, very excited to see Zeusy get a chance finally so to actually get a midfielder in there. Right. So we're full of confidence. Thanks for the call, Will. We're full of confidence. Here's a nice stat uh, that that Paul Carr put out on Twitter: uh, nine Americans, everyone but Gomez and Tim Howard, have more touches than every other than every Jamaican player. That's insane. That's insane. So this not, no, not surprising though. But no. to, to go to go back to to Will's point, I, I, I've watched other teams in qualifying bunker in against the U.S. just like Jamaica's doing, and the U.S. create nothing. Nothing. You know, I've seen nothing. that. Now, so yep. the fact that they, they're creating things is the difference to me. I, I, I and I, I think that's the reason for us to be positive coming out of this. Uh, despite the fact that the score remains uh, zero zero, the uh, the the scene is set for the Americans to take ho- hold of this. And if if Jurgen Klinsmann is worth his salt as a as a, a head coach, then he brings them out of the ha- after halftime. They feel it. They find their goal and they go on and use that as a jumping off point, rather than which has been the uh, kind of the American mo over the past couple of years, where they fall behind and have to come back. We don't want to see that. We don't want to have to go yep. through that stress. There's no reason to expect Jamaica to score. Zero reason. There's every reason to think the Americans will find one. So that's how we have to look at this as, as fans here, just so we don't get too, uh, too anxious about it. Three points are right there. Just reach out and grab them. Just reach out. You know, in, in the pregame, we talked about the level of, uh, of consistency that Bogan Negra and Trindle being in this team was going to give, and I see that immensely already. Yep. There's, I don't think there's been one position on the field that has had been more dynamically better than, it, than the game, game against Jamaica than the right back position. What it's bringing to what Trindle is bringing to this game is the biggest difference maker from Jamaica to, in my mind. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, absolutely. We got to get going. They're getting ready to kick off the second half. We will be back here. Post game, NESN.tv, NESNradio.com. Jason Davis and Jerry Dubois, best soccer show. Join us then, guys. Sorry, it's wrong music. Let's start again. Let's start again. Here we go, guys. Best Soccer Show Post Game Edition USA 1 Jamaica Nothing Jason Davis and Jared Dubois Be here with you for the next half hour or so Phone lines are open 201-430-2378 We've got a lot to talk about A lot of good First 45 minutes was good Second 45 minutes, and then in the, the second half, when they got the goal, when Hercules Gomez scores on a free kick, eh, not so good, especially after they scored, Jared. That well, was one, thing I, one, else, one thing I don't seem to understand. Do people really think that the same game is going to be played after the goal is scored? No, no, of course not. It opened up, and certainly Jamaica went after it a little bit more. And I think what's troubling for us, look, okay, first, let's lay it out there. Three points or three points. It's, it's a lifesaver in terms of, of the group. Tied at top of the group with seven points with Guatemala and Jamaica now. Uh, everything's in the Americans' hands to take care of business and go through to the hex, and we can all forget that this little blip happened. And the next time, the next round of games, the Americans should have Michael Bradley. They should have Landon Donovan. Things will be a little bit more uh, uh, calm, and we'll have those be- those players that we know they need to be at their best. So three points. That that's we can be ecstatic about that, but I think in in order to put the the game in context, we have to talk about the first forty five and how great it was, and then the second forty five when the Jamaicans started going after the Americans, Jared, they they didn't do as well. They they lost control of the game. They couldn't possess the ball as much. They didn't create any chance any significant chances that I can remember, and it's troubling because 
they need to be able to close games out. They need to be doing it in a manner that doesn't, you know, we're sitting there going, Let's go for the second goal. I mean, I, I know that's easier said than done sometimes. But you make those subs. Let's talk about the substitutions. Breck Shea and Marisa Du uh, and Josie Outdoor. Josie Outdoor, I really have no problem with, although I would have preferred to see him come on for Clint Dempsey rather than Hercules Gomez. Yeah. But with with introducing Breck Shea, who we thought might help get some bring some width before the the goal was scored. After the goal, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to take out a, a player like Torres, who is one of the better um, uh, guys with the balls at ball at his feet on the team. And, yeah, and I, I, Zussi, same thing. I think, yeah, one of the things that uh, that you can say about the second part of that half after the goal was scored is, what was this team missing? What what was the number one thing this team was missing after that? Tell after, me. After the goal? Uh, was, after the goal. And, and what was the team missing that last part of the second half? Somebody to to, to calm things down and... and possess the ball. Possess Someone the that ball. possess the ball in, in traffic, be calm on the ball. And th- now here's the thing. Jurgen Klinsmann gets to win. Credit to him. But the the, the substitutions are a bit mind-boggling, like you said. Yeah. It's just odd. Area code 972, who's this? Hey, it's Will again, guys. Uh, so. All right, Will. This is your post-game piece. What you got to say? <laughs> all right, so... I don't know. Maybe I'm looking at this, this whole qualification wrong. Maybe I'm looking at a style instead of a result more. Uh huh. Um, I did not see the proactive possession style, but maybe you guys can throw some perspective. Maybe it's just more the results. Well, for like, 90 minutes, you didn't see it, or I mean, like that first you watched the first half, right? The very first part, you, you kind of have to cancel it out because you make no, a play back. They no, didn't, didn't. no, you don't. No. You don't. No, you do not look. As Jared okay. said to you before, you cannot you cannot blame the you cannot put that on the Americans. Jamaica decided to play the way they played. Yes, it's easier for the Americans to pass the ball, but I'm not again. I'm not concerned about possessing the ball. I'm I'm concerned about the chances when you have that opportunity to command the game. And they created those chances. The second half is different, and, and it makes it 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 does bring something to to what Will said that the Americans couldn't keep their grip on the game when the Jamaic- when the Jamaicans opened it up a little bit. That's came- valid. That, that is completely valid. Area code 410, who's this? Hello? Yes. Hi, this is Julio. Um, I, I didn't understand that um, out the door substitution. I was thinking that maybe uh, if you're going to take Hercules Gomez off to put another midfielder on instead. No, I, that, I think the idea was put a big body center forward up there. If you need a release valve, if you need an outlet, uh, Josie's the guy that can can hold the ball up for you. It didn't really come into play a whole lot. They were giving the ball up in midfield and not even getting a chance to get it up to Josie. They did start to play a little bit more, uh, a few more long balls, Jared. But I saw a lot of diagonals trying to get Breck Shea on the on the left, mm-hmm. and they're just not getting. Uh, it's Steve Trundle, Steve Trundle was probably my man of the match. Was magnificent almost throughout the game, but he had a couple of moments. And and out of the back, there were some some iffy decisions being made towards the second uh, ladder. But here's the thing: on on the camera angle that we get to watch at home, we don't necessarily get to see what options the defenders have in front of them. No, I, we I, don't I, we, we don't necessarily know what movement ahead of them. They may have no other choice than to do that, which is a fault on the team, though in yes. general. Yes, agreed. If if a if if a defender um, or a deep lying midfielder is playing a long ball out of the, from their own half, usually it's because there aren't any other options. Which again, you, like you said, you have to put on everybody else not making themselves available. You have any other observations, Julio? Um, n- not really. <laughs> feel feel you feel better now though. The, the three points. I know that we all wanted them to go out and smash Jamaica, and that would have been a statement. But three points or three. This, this is. Sets them up to handle thing, handle their business, and now we don't have to get quite as nervous about it, right? Yes. Um, the only thing I want to say is that um, yes, we lost the ball more, but Jamaica didn't create many chances. So the, I guess yeah, that's true. Was, that's true. I think the I think the up. the best chance of of the half for Jamaica was that long. Uh, that long, low shot that that Howard had to parry with is his first save. Yeah, that- there's that one nice cross that Chirundolo headed out for a corner that was uh being contested no. by Ryan Johnson, but nothing really direct now. Yeah, Julio makes a good point. There weren't Jamaica didn't create a lot of chances. What it was was a lot of build up play from Jamaica with the Americans trying to sit behind the ball, and that makes us nervous. Just as fans makes us nervous to watch the Americans try to defend in their their own final uh, their own defensive third because we've seen that story a thousand times before. Now, Jamaica's not Mexico. And no. 
they're not going to play the intricate passes uh, through your defenders like Mexico can. And and Mexico will even, you know, be a lot more accurate with crosses. Jamaica couldn't find a cross. You know, it's funny. A a year ago when when Klinsman took over and talked about everything he wanted to do, did you think he would be nearly as pragmatic in World Cup qualifying as he has been? Well, okay, probably at that point I may have had the blinders on just listening to him talk and knowing what he wanted to do. But if you got outside of the the Klinsman sphere of influence back then, how else could he have played it? He doesn't. It's not like he's resetting the personnel and bringing through a thousand new players that can play some kind of new style. These are the same guys for the most part. Zussi is a a new addition, but for the most part, these are the same guys, and they're just not going to just learn how to switch styles in, in a heartbeat. Erico two six seven. Who's this? Gentlemen, Doris from Regal Park. What's up? Just kidding. It's Jonathan Tannenbaum. Oh, oh, I'm, okay. I'm nominated man of the match. Oh, yes. Go for it. Steve Sherundolo. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any doubting that, right? Well, a bunch but, of people saying it was Danny Williams. I just thought that after watching Parker's play as well as he did, uh, people kind of forgot how good Sherundolo can be in a situation like that. Uh, he's, 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 he's calm. He's composed. He usually makes the right decision. He makes um, he he. Jared and I are talking about this. His his decision making just on when to to press forward and and when that 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 is on a different level from anybody else the Americans have in their pool. And and while uh, Michael Parkers is a fine replacement, there's a different dynamic there. And I, I think it's also a confidence thing. Everybody else knows. Not only is Steve Trundle going to add something to the attack. But he is, he is still pretty much a lockdown defender. It's going to take something pretty good to beat Steve Chirundula. One question for you guys, and I'll take my answer off the air. You surprised we did not see more of Darren Maddox over these two games? We saw him late in the first game, right? We did not see him tonight. Yeah. Um, I thought we were overhyping Darren Maddox leading into these two games. I think, you know, as MLS fans, we had seen him, what he could do for Vancouver, and he's been a revelation, but it's, he's still a very young player. And when you're when you're trying to grind out points, and that's what qualifying is, coaches tend to rely on guys they know, right, for for longer periods of time. The the new hot talent can come in and make a difference late in a match, but you're not going to really well, give. Seven what points. I will say though is, in a game like this one, where you knew Jamaica knew they were going to give up possession to the U.S., that was their game plan coming in. Wouldn't right. you want that escape valve up top of a player it, like Darren Maddox? Well, yeah, but you have. You have Omar Cummings, who can certainly do that. I, I, Omar Cummings can do it, but I just think Darren Maddox is faster than Omar C- Cummings, and I think that's something that could really expose the U.S. So, I mean, it's easy to say in hindsight, but I do think Darren Maddox is, is maybe not getting enough credit here. We're talking about a step or two faster, maybe a, a step or two quicker out of a, you know, out of a break. Kind I think of. Omar, Omar Cummings finds his, finds his width and cuts in, inside. That's his game. I think Darren Maddox is much more that's straight true. up the middle. It, that 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 might be true, but really, you're putting Darren Maddox conceivably up against uh, Jeff Cameron and Carlos Bocanegra. Who's going to win that battle 99 times out of 100? I mean, unless you're going to find find ways to get him in behind. And like you said, they didn't have the ball enough. I mean, they could have they could have just popped balls all over the over the top trying to get to Darren Maddox. How many times do they have that opportunity in the first half? In the second half, certainly, but they didn't. They, that wasn't their game in the second half. The Americans dropped back, uh, started defending a lot more, putting more men behind the ball, which meant that that what Jamaica needed was somebody to get some width and 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 put in a cross or find a way through um, that back line. That that Darren Maddox is not. I'm not saying he can't do it. I'm saying that he's not really made for it yet, and he's a young player on yeah, a the team. Consistency is not necessarily has, there with him. Not, that, that that's that's probably part of it. Again, I, I, well, it's not that I don't think that Darren Maddox is a very good player, and that he's going to make a difference for Jamaica in the future. I just know that the tr- the the tendency of of head coaches, especially when th- you know there's so much riding on these two games, is to rely on veteran players. You just feel more comfortable, whether they're better or not. Almost doesn't matter. We've seen. Over the just look at Klinsman. Look at Klinsman over two games. First game, he goes with the most – like we were talking about pragmatism. The, the, he goes with the most uh, conservative lineup he could probably possibly go with and doesn't get the job done. Second game, when his hand is forced and he has to trust some of the talent that's out there on his, on, on his bench, the game flourishes. You know, and I'm not saying that you can always just throw caution to the wind, but it kind of shows that maybe Klinsman's not giving enough credit to a, a, the, t- the style of play that maybe the U.S. can play when challenged to do so. 
I, I tend to agree, and this is the same criticism we had of Bob Bradley. Rather than giving, oh, giving some of the responsibility to the players you know can handle the ball in the middle of the field, the Jose Francisco Torres is of the world, the, the instinct is, all right, I'm going to throw on a def- another defensive midfielder, Marisa Du, and uh, in, instead, of, instead of trying to proactively grab the game and, and, and kill it, which, again, I think they should have been going for a second goal and they didn't push hard enough for it, um, mm-hmm. But rather than proactively going for the game and trying to kill it, they 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 said, "All right, we're going to take your shots, Jamaica, and hope that you know Marisa Duke can make a timely tackle or or step into a passing lane at the right time." And there are are negatives that come with that. The first pass Marisa Du made, Jared, mm-hmm. <laughs> the first pass he gives it over to Jamaica, which leads to a counter. So yeah. I, you know, very I, very, I, very I, first one. I mean, I, Marisa Du, it's just. It's unfortunate because he makes some good tackles, and I see why Klinsman relies on him in these situations. I really do. But I just don't see how it eclipses the fact that the ball is not taken care of well enough. It, 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 it's, a, it's a huge thing. Real, real quick, I want to make sure – I want to get this in. i got to pick your poison for you. i got a little matchup here for you. Right, let's go. Uh, hold on a second. Who helped their cause more tonight? Danny Williams, Jose Francisco Torres. Danny Williams, without a doubt. As long well, Williams, okay. Danny Williams or Graham Zuzi? Ooh, um, I think Zuzi was coming from farther back, from a lower position on the the ladder, so he probably improved slightly more than Danny Williams. But I think Danny Williams was overall the better performance. I mean, I can think- can Dan- does Danny Williams have a place in this team at right midfield anymore, or is this his spot? His spot should be in the middle of the field. If you need someone in the middle of the field, in uh, in front of the back line, playing that defensive midfielder position, you should look to Danny Williams when you are. I mean, I, I, I was he he uh, Jurgen Klinsmann could have gone with Maurice to do in that spot over Danny Williams, and yep. it would have hurt the Americans. Danny Williams is a better passer. Danny Williams is uh, better uh, makes better runs than Maurice to do. Better uh, Danny Williams is better with the ball than Maurice to do. That's all right. Let's look. Let's look one game ahead. Okay, next game coming up. Assuming that Michael Bradley is back and you're going to play a defensive midfielder behind Bradley, is it going to be Williams, Adu, or Jones, or Beckerman? Let's not discount Beckerman. Which of those four would you play right now behind Bradley? A classic. Uh, if you want a, a, a defensive midfielder that uh, really knows how to defend and, and that's his first responsibility, I, I think you go with Danny Williams because not only is he probably just as good or, or close to what Maurice Du brings you defensively, he's better with the ball. So, whereas Beckerman, not quite the defender, and Jermaine Jones, while a better, a, a, a very good defender, a very good destroyer of a midfielder, is a liability and, and doesn't take, the, take care of the ball very well. Area code 248, who's this? Hi, this is uh, Ishwar again. I just wanted to throw a couple stats at you. Uh, sure. These past defenders tonight, 95.7%. 90 95.7% pass completion rate. Well, that's what I really want to see him because he's not a guy that wants to go forward. Joan wants to go forward. A dude sometimes tries to get forward. Williams loves to sit and just break up plays and play straightforward, simple passes that right. a dude isn't able to do. I think that allows someone like Michael Bradley to. Go box to box. Right. Are, are we getting we're, we're getting excited for a potential Bradley Williams midfield, aren't we? We're getting a little excited yeah. for that. I think that that's something that 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 would benefit them. Now, um, he's Klinsman has shown a propensity to rely on Jermaine Jones. Whether yeah. or not he pushes him out, I don't know. He's shown a propensity um, for uh, relying on Kyle Beckerman. That's also because of absences and injuries and and that kind of thing. But um, I. Think that that Danny, if you have Danny Williams and his his best position is in the middle of the field, and you have a bunch of other players, it, it makes it difficult to get him in there. I understand that there there's some whether I want to call it depth because I think we're all they're all basically on the same level. Um, the whereas you know it's, it's I don't know how to describe. It's not like the Americans have. It's not like the U.S. national team has a, a fantastic defensive midfielder with a couple of, of pretty good ones. They've got a, a couple of pretty good ones, or you know. Yeah, bu- that's assuming you're not evaluating Bradley as that being that position. I mean, no, no. I, I think we've moved past the point of thinking Bradley as that position well, anymore. Bradley is an absolute lock to start. 
if he's healthy. He has to be. He is the best box-to-box midfielder that we have, without a doubt. I mean, and he can has the defensive bite and the passing ability to, to kind of bring the whole game together. He is the glue that will hold that midfield together when he's there. Now, with that, that being said, I asked you which one you think would partner with him. I tend to agree with you. I think Danny Williams has made enough of a case. My only re- reservation is it's based off one game seeing, seeing him there. I don't know if he had one really good game or no. this is him because I don't have the luxury of seeing Hoffenheim all the time. Right. I don't it, get the luxury. And from my understanding, he hasn't been playing as much as he did over the last season. Absolutely. That is a factor. And, and uh, the, the, my familiarity with Maurice Adu is, is part of the reason that I kind of eliminate him from this uh, scenario because I, I am seen enough of him that I think I know what he can do and, I, and, I, and I'm not convinced that it's the best the Americans can do in that position. I know what Kyle Beckerman can do, and I defended him after Friday night, and I yeah. still think he can be an asset, but I don't think he's better than, than Danny Williams. Um, and I don't think. And with Bradley know. coming back, with Bradley coming back, Beckerman's role would kind of diminish because Beckerman is expected to do a lot of the same things Bradley does, which is right. hold the ball, m- m- distribute the ball. And with right. Bradley coming back, that really hurts Beckerman's shot of getting in there. He's not going to be the guy that's the ball winner, which is what we look at with Danny Williams tonight, always swarming the ball, always closing space every time pos- possession changes. Right. Uh, as as. You know, as we led up to this game, there was some talk, and I may have fostered a little bit of it, playing a devil's advocate kind of thing, about Jurgen Klinsmann and his job security and that and the like. Eric, uh, let's let's hit the phone number two zero one four three zero two three seven eight if you want to get in. Um, had a bunch of good calls already. Keep them coming. Um, talking about Jurgen Klinsmann, if he had lost this game, he didn't lose the game. So I'm, you know, there's no reason to even talk about what what would have happened if Jurgen Klinsmann lost this game. But what I want to know from the fan base is how confident they are in his ability to turn around a bad result and, and do what's needed to be done. And and you have, like I said, you have to give him credit for putting out a team that dominated Jamaica the way they did in the first 45. Did Jamaica sit back? Absolutely. That they still, uh, they still effectively broke down Jamaica, they still effectively created chances. The second mm-hmm. half is a little different, and the, the, the substitutions change the dynamic a little bit, and we have to talk about that. Area code 281, who's this? Hello? Yes, you're on the air. Oh, Anthony Menino. Hey, what's up, Second Anthony? Half. Yeah, I wanted to talk about um, Klinsman. Sure. Um, my, my thing about Klinsman is, obviously, I mean, people had question marks before with the loss in Jamaica, and how everything didn't go well there. But if, if you look at the stats, he was the first coach to ever beat Italy, first coach to ever beat Mexico and Mexico, and we're top of the table in qualification right now. Well, correct? well yeah, okay. Yeah. Technically speaking, tied for the top of the Maybe group. Maybe everything hasn't gone according to plan, but... Okay, let, let, let's, let's ask this. Jared, how many points have they dropped? They've dropped... To uh, five points. I'm, no, I'm going to call it three points. Well, they, they dropped where, two in I, Guatemala. Okay, they dropped two in Guatemala. They dropped one in Jamaica because you play, you're probably playing for a tie in Jamaica. So oh, okay. I, I'm thinking because they were leading, I'm thinking that they lost. They dropped three points okay. there because they had the lead. Okay, okay. fine. If you, be, if, you, if you really want to lock it down that way, that's fine. Uh, you could argue that they lost uh, five points. I, I would yeah. say closer to three. So while they are top of the table, Anthony – in qualifying, it's not the kind of top of the, the, the group that really fills you with a lot of confidence. They're really going to, you know, we wanted to see them the coast through. Area code 214, who's this? Turn down your, uh, turn down your radio, Nathan. Yeah, turn down your radio, Nathan. Or whatever uh, you listen to. How you doing? Hey, Manny. Uh, Sorry, uh, Manny. Go ahead. Good, that's a good game. They played the possession game. They had the, you know, the passes were made. I see how that game was trying to implement when they were in Jamaica, but um, it really worked out well when he came home. So, I mean, I was glad to see. I was glad to see that. I just wish, you know, we had a much more finish touch right. the ball. So, the end. so based on the, hope. the first half, which was great, Manny, and the second half, which was less so, but Jamaica taking it to him, and the substitutions, what grade do you give Jurgen Klinsmann for tonight? Mm, I mean, I mean, you know, Bright played it out well. And, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of Altador, so I really can't. Put him in that category. All right. Just, you know, All right, so understand. A to but, a, hey, they, okay. they got the game. They got 
we got the three points. That's what we needed. Okay. And uh, I just wish we had a little more finish on the uh, at the end when we get to the box. But okay. uh, other than that, they played a good possession game. All right. I'll leave you guys out. All right, thanks, man. He didn't. Okay. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll do what I'll do what what he what he didn't. I'll give Clinton tonight a solid B. I think what holds him back from an A. Obviously, he gets the result, which gives him definitely a passing grade. The style of play in the first half, the cho- choices he was chose to make to start the game, where I think keeps him from getting into that A range is the fact that the substitutions that were made. I don't necessarily know. While they did cement the result, I think it made it a lot more difficult than it needed to be because of the types of players that were substituted in. Right. I. I, I okay. I was going to be a little harsher, but I. I, I agree. A B. It sounds about right. He's. He gets an A. If you want to go A plus for the first half, it's just a matter of finishing that they. You know, they should have been up three nothing. And obviously, if 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 one or two of those goes in, it changes the complexion of the second half completely. Um, but based on the second half and based on the substitution, you got to pull it back a little bit. There, there was some questionable what, thing happening there. What and, do and, you uh, say to the people that that are gonna say that the U.S. got a lucky goal, and that's what happened here? Jamaica got a lucky goal on there first in in, in Kingston. So I mean, it, it evens out. These things are are part of the game. The you know, we we talked about coming out of Kingston. We talked about who deserved to win that game. I saw a lot of Jamaica deserved to win that game. I have no problem with that sentiment. I thought it was pretty much a toss-up, but I can understand why people say that. Tonight, it's hard not to say that the Americans deserve to win that game. You have to say that. So based on that, who cares if it's a lucky goal or not? They all count the same. They hit the woodwork three times. Yeah, that, that, that's not, you know, it, those aren't goals, but they at least indicate that the Americans um, uh, were the better team overall. Area code 616, who's this? Uh, this is Carl. Hey, Carl. Uh, I I just have to say I I I was doubting Klinsman after the last game. I hated the three midfield formation as m- mostly everybody did. But I thought he did a great job coming out with Torres and Zuzi was just outstanding. So and and props to Gomez to so the goal. You said it might have been lucky, but it was a great goal. Yeah, no. I mean, look, you you, you take your shot there, you put it on the net, and you make the goalkeeper save it. And while Miller, like we said, was amazing for most of the night, he makes one mistake on that. And and oh, I haven't eaten Jared. Where have you? What? What? Where you what? been? Where you I been? warned. I warned you off the top. We were gonna use it. I, know, I, I don't. I can't hit the button. You have to hit the button. I know. I know. So so, uh, big props to Hercules Gomez. For getting the goal, certainly deserved. Is there, is there any guy that that wanted? I mean, just look at that guy. Uh, I don't know. He's every. Klinsman finally gave him a, ch- a shot, and this guy repays Klinsman. And there's no one out there. I don't know. That, is there a more passionate guy playing for this team than Hercules Gomez? How long ago was it? I mean, I talked to him on this show, and he told me. He said, I have to think of myself as not an American international anymore. I have to yeah. move on from that and not even worry about it and be a Santos player and just do my thing here. He gets called in, and now he's he's basically a fixture. Has he yeah, has yeah. he? When's the last time he didn't play? Bef- uh, before I, I would say, did he play in the Italy game? I don't recall if he played in the Italy game or not. But uh, it's, it's somewhere right around that time, I believe was 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 about the last time he probably didn't feature. But he brings something to this team that's different from every other forward right. out there that we have in the pool, and that's the fact that he's just he's industrious. He always working, always working hard. Yeah, area code six one nine. Who's this? How are you doing? Post game, Enrique. Hey, what's up, Enrique? Uh, uh, what's your thoughts? Uh, I've already had a situation with uh, Bob Bradley's uh, starting lineup. Great substitutes. Now Plinsman, some some so good um, <laughs> right. lineup, but but his <laughs> his substitutes suck. <laughs> yeah, I like the passion, Enrique. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that, that's a good point. We used to get on Bob Bradley for. For making mistakes with his lineup and having to make halftime changes, Jared. How many times did Bob and he would make great halftime changes and it would change the complexion of the game and go, why didn't yep. you do that in the first place? And Jurgen Klinsman seems to have done the exact opposite here tonight. And you know, would can we get somebody who can do both at the same time? I mean, look, Klinsman's lineup choices in Jamaica were they were only questionable because of the two the two bad fouls and the two yeah. free. If they get a, if they get a point or they steal three points there, no one's talking about that lineup because that lineup was made to get a result. Right, exactly. And and for the most part, in the traditional soccer sense of going for a point, it was effective. They just they they had two bad fouls and and yeah, those count against him, sure, because he he played those players that committed those fouls in the bad spots and the you know obviously they didn't practice enough set piece de- uh, defense and and give up a bad deflection off of Beckerman and. Uh, 
Uh, the other one was, you know, just a really nice free kick goal. Tonight, the the lineup that he put out there to start the game, and maybe this is just the fact of the, the matter that Clemson's better or has more of a touch with his team when it comes to playing, to putting out a team that's going to be proactive, that's going to have more of the ball. I mean, you know Jamaica's going to bunker, so you put out these players to go and grab the ball and make it their game, and they did that. They did that. They with, with, with Klinsman, it's almost like when he looks at the U.S. roster, it's kind of like he looks at you and I look at our closet, you know, where this is your <laughs> – this is your going out clothes. These oh, are your work clothes. Like this it. is your casual clothes. And you okay. put on the outfit. He puts on the outfit for the job he wants to do that day. He doesn't right. have an 11 guys that are good for every scenario. Right. No, absolutely. So you, this is a little uh, tonight. What is tonight? Was tonight the was that tonight? Tonight the was his going out clothes. Tonight was tonight was his uh, like, I'm going to go out and I'm going to have fun clothes. Okay, so to, yeah, I got, I got you. And, and Jamaica tonight was, he, bust, like, he busted out the, the spaghetti strap. I'm talking if you're if he's a lady, he's got the spaghetti he strap. Feel? He he's trolling for he's trolling for some dudes tonight. Jay Rodius. Jim, that makes Jamaica. That makes Jamaica he, like coveralls he, he, and, and shorts on the night. <laughs> but okay, well, what about his second half substitutions? I mean, it's oh, like I mean, he, put a, he put a sweater on. It's like it's like you know all these. It, it really wasn't working out. His evening wasn't going so. He went home and, and grabbed a bucket of or a pint of hog and dust and put on the sweat. Yeah, he, 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 put, he put on the Cosby. He put on the Cosby sweater and he just curled up with a good book <laughs> in the second half. You know the there was no, it, it just really was like. But it, he did work. I mean that he, he got the job done. And at the end of the day, and I've always said, just as much as Klinsman seems to be a pragmatist, I am as well. You got me my points. We'll move well, on. As long okay. as you can get that. I'm good at that as a base because I know that every other change he's trying to make at a grandiose level isn't immediate. Okay, so you're you're okay with him being Bob Bradley with a couple of of extras, a little, a couple of features, a couple of you know options thrown in there. You're okay with that. He's doing this other thing over here that's kind of like reshaping everything. But for the meantime, while we're trying to qualify, he's going to just be not that he's going to pick the same team Bob Bradley would. I'm just saying that in terms of getting the points. Pragmatism is okay. I, I'm a pragmatic guy for the most part. I, I, co- head coaches are judged by wins, losses, qualification. In this case, his job right now is to qualify for the hexagonal. Once he qualifies for the hexagonal, he can kind of reboot his system and, and take a look at his program and say, all right, now this is how we're going to attack this group because it's going to be much harder than the hex, Jared. It's not going to get, and this isn't. This isn't the tough. This is assuming assuming they qualify for the hex, and I think at this point it, it's a pretty good uh, assumption that they'll, they'll most likely make it, uh, given the games that they have coming up and where they're going to be played. I I feel that that January camp is going to be really essential to a few guys. That's going to be the chance to see uh, a mixed discarud. You know, like what is he going to be a player that can feature in the uh, in the in the hexagonal? We got to find those couple guys that can play this style, the style that was played in the first half tonight. And they don't have to be starters because I think you you don't expect Bradley to be out. You don't expect right. Donovan to be out. But right. you need to find more of the Zuzis and Torreses that can come in and play this style and not have to revert back to the style we we're used to with Bob Bradley. Right. Uh, let, let's um, I, One more thing uh, about this team, about this personnel before we get ready to wrap this show up. Clint Dempsey, who hadn't played in a competitive match since the end of Fulham season uh, in the spring, Comes into this team having just signed for Tottenham, gets two full runouts. Not what I expected. Now I don't know that he was entirely effective in you know every phase of the game. He seemed to fade in both games late. He faded in both games, and I was surprised not to see him come off tonight. I thought the outdoor switch would be for Dempsey rather than for, than for Gomez, who seemed to have more gas left in the tank. But I, I, you've got to give Clint Dempsey at least a passing grade. Gets a goal in Jamaica, which they should have probably made stand up. And played fairly well. I think his touch was off, and he did kill a couple of attacks. But for the most part, he was dangerous enough to draw some some Jamaican attention and create some things for some other guys. And I, I mean, just hats off a uh, uh, yeoman's effort from Clint Dempsey. It's my, it's my summation for my summation of Dempsey over two games: great goal, great gif. He made he made that face he made today. <laughs> that troll face that he made okay. made for a great gif that's out there on the internet. If you want to yes. go see it. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this one up. Thank you for all the great phone calls. Um, keep them coming. We're going to be doing the, the live shows as the Americans continue the qualification run. Speaking of live shows, 
North American Soccer Network, NASN, has added a, a new show to our lineup, Seeing Red NY, the New York Red Bulls podcast with uh, March, Mark Fishkin and Dave Martinez. They are getting set to debut their live post-game, Red Bulls game, post-game coverage, taking phone calls just like we do for the national team. They'll be doing that for the Red Bulls if you are a Red Bulls fan or just a, a, a regular MLS fan who's been waiting for these kind of shows to kind of get out there. I know a couple of local markets do them. But for the Red Bulls, this is a, a big deal. With if you the, like this it, format that we do for World Cup qualifiers of the U.S. national team, you're going to like this setup. I mean, it's it's for the MLS fan. It's this setup for the MLS fan. And I know it's team specific, but it's going to be really good coverage. Yeah, and it's just going to uh, continue our progression at the network to opening up a bunch of other things. All right, so you go to iTunes and you give us a rating and review. That helps out the podcast stuff. You go listen to nasnradio.com, which is the 24-hour streaming uh, radio station for American soccer fans covering uh, everything. We've got everything covered. Mexico, uh, the Mad About Football crew does all of South America and, and some European stuff as well. Uh, we're adding shows all the time. Radio Suju. Uh, I'm missing a bunch of stuff. Night of the Supporters Shield, MLS and 30. Uh, all of the team-related podcasts that I'm blanking. Jared's got uh, uh, Corner of the Galaxy, Soccer Made in Portland. Uh, I could keep going, but just go to the website, check it all out. Uh, we're getting bigger and better here at NASN. All right, Jared, what am I missing? Uh, just ahead for all of our normal listeners, there will be no Wednesday live show. This is your live show for the week. So tomorrow night we are not live. So we will be back on the weekend with your regular podcast coming out Monday morning. And get on YouTube. We're working that out as well. YouTube.com slash best soccer show. Uh, thanks, guys. USA, three points. Can't really sneeze at that, right? That's That's all we cared about tonight. Three points. We can go home happy. Later.